Have you ever been under pressure? Has the pressures of life ever been so overwhelming to you that you weren't sure if you could make it? I heard somebody ask a question one time in a leadership class. They said, if you were to squeeze a sponge, what would come out of it? And I, I don't know if everybody got the question when he first said it, but whatever the sponge had absorbed. He then said, if you squeeze an orange, what will come out of an orange? Go ahead and comment. Orange juice. If you squeezed an apple, what would come out? Apple juice. What would come out is whatever the, you were full of. Whatever you had absorbed with the sponge would then come out of the sponge. And orange would produce orange juice because that's what it's full of. What's coming out of you right now? What's coming out of your life? What are you producing when you feel pressure? I was sharing my plans to reopen live services here at the church with our team. And I expressed to them this week that I was feeling extreme pressure. Extreme pressure. A lot of changes to be thinking about in the church world. Uh, if, if we try to just go back to church as it always was and to normal church, uh, we won't have a church coming out of this thing. There's things that has to change. There are things that changed during this quarantine time. And I've been feeling pressure. I've been feeling the squeeze. And I said this to the team. I said, it's amazing, though, that although I'm experiencing extreme pressure, I have peace. And I made this statement. I said, there's peace under pressure. Today, I want to talk to you about peace under pressure. This is a sermon birthed out of that moment, out of that conversation. In Luke chapter 10, in verse 38, it says this. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him to her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. They were having barbecue, right? She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to get up and help me. But the Lord said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen what is best, and I, it will not be taken from her. So today, we're going to look at this passage, and I want to uncover three pressure points that will try to steal your peace. Three pressure points, if you're taking notes, write that down. Three pressure points that will try to steal your peace. And my hope is by identifying these three pressure points that we can draw some attention to them and avoid having them steal the peace in our lives. Here's the first one. Point number one, pressure from unresolved personal issues. Pressure from unresolved personal issues. Watch this. Luke 10, verse 40, she came to Jesus. Martha came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to get up and help me. Now, we have to understand this, guys. Martha's problem with Mary isn't the fact that she's just sitting here right now not helping her. There is some underlining major sister issues that have happened year after year and time after time. I bet Mary quite frequently dodged her dinner preparation chores in order to go do other things. And now Martha is just venting about an unresolved personal issue that she's already had against Mary. I think Martha may also cope with her stresses of preparing all these things by getting on edge and, and being short, right? 
Now Martha is also trying to triangulate her aggravation by bringing Jesus into this. <coughs> Jesus, can you imagine? Mary's not helping me. Can you go do something about this? Let me tell you this, guys, right now. People are not your problem. Mary was not Martha's problem. Martha's problem was Martha. Martha's problem was that she was overwhelmed and stressed out about dinner. She expected her sister to help her, who did not. And now she's venting and trying to bring other people into the situation. The stress from this dinner party exposed a pre-existing crack that Martha already had. Have you ever taken an egg and hard-boiled it, put it in boiling water, and noticed that all of a sudden, like, the, the white of the egg is coming out of the egg as it boils? Now, when you put the egg in, you didn't know that that egg had a crack in it. But as the pressure built up inside, as the egg began to harden, it exposed a fault line or a crack in that egg that it could no longer contain. And that's what happens a lot of times with pressures. These pre-existing conditions, these pre-existing uh, comments and things that we've bottled up inside just come flooding out because we've lost the guard over our mouth. You've, you've had this happen before in your life. You've been feeling a certain way about somebody, and now you get into an argument. And you start losing the argument. And all of a sudden, you start digging deep down things that you've hidden and shut down for years. They all now come flooding out of you. You say some hurtful things like, I didn't mean to say it. Yeah, you, you, you meant it. You just didn't mean for them to hear it. Come on. Pressures can expose these things, okay? I see this happen all the time. Pressure exists when you allow external circumstances to produce internal anxiety. Let me say it again. Pre, uh, pressure exists when you allow external circumstances to produce internal anxiety. There's a lot of internal anxieties happening around us today. It is in your control to get rid of that pressure. It is. It is within your control to hit the pressure relief valve. Has anybody ever used a pressure cooker? It's kind of like a crock pot. We have one of them at the house. Uh, we use it quite often. And the thing that's actually so scary about that pressure cooker is it builds up an extreme amount of pressure. If you were to go pop that lid off, before you let the pressure out, that thing would shoot right through the ceiling of your kitchen. Before you open that pressure cooker, there's a pressure relief valve that you have to turn. And when you do that, tss, I mean, it shoots steam all the way to the ceiling as this thing is decompressing or depressurizing. You can do that in your life. You can go to those circumstances and those emotions that you're feeling and tss, you can turn the valve. You can release the anxiety instead of letting it build up in your life. 2 Corinthians 7, 5 says, When we arrived at Macedonia, there was no rest for us. We faced conflict from every direction with battles on the outside and fear on the inside. The pressure from the outside was causing pressure to rise on the inside. And it is our jobs to control the pressure, okay, to deal with it properly. You have to deal with how you feel. You can say that with me, it rhymes. You have to deal with how you feel. If someone asks you, are you okay? <laughs> what are you feeling right now? then all you're doing is shutting these things in, trying to ignore them. You're trying to act like you're big and tough, but really what's happening is you're building pressure on the inside. It's going to either make you sick or soon you're going to explode and you're going to hurt somebody with your words. You have to deal with how you feel. Psalm 62 verse 8 says this, Pour out your heart to God 
and he is our refuge. Pour out your heart to God. Now, we don't want you looking crazy or nothing, but maybe you need to go for a walk privately, not in public, and go talk to God. Pour that thing out. Maybe, maybe you're having a problem with someone in your house. Go for a, a walk. Give it to the Lord. Get away from the situation and relieve that pressure before the anxiety builds up. Number two, we can experience pressures from a wrong perspective. We can experience pressures from a wrong perspective. Watch this. In Luke 10, verse 41, it says, But the Lord said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about so many things. You're not just upset about dinner. You're upset about a whole lot of stuff. You're upset that you're still at home living with your sister and you ain't married yet. I don't know. I just made that up. You're upset about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. Saying your perspective is wrong. You're worried about everybody else's business. You're worried about what everybody else is doing. And you've forgotten about the one thing that's the most important. Listen, guys, there's always going to be temptation to focus on the wrong things. Someone else's business isn't your business. Come on. Look, pressure exists when you focus on the problem instead of the provider. Pressure happens. Pressure exists when you focus on the problem instead of your provider. Psalm 73, verse 21. Then I realized that my heart was bitter and I was all torn up inside. I was so foolish and ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. Yet, I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. You lead me to a glorious destiny. You know, I love that. I love the, the openness that David has here. And what he's saying in Pastor Mike's translation, I finally realized I was acting like a jerk. I was being a big idiot. And I finally came to my senses. And I found the correct perspective. I'm now realizing I was looking at this wrong. I was behaving in a way that wasn't life-giving to the situation. Philippians 4, 8, and 9 says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Then God, then the God of peace is with you, will be with you. And look what it says there. And I, and I know what it's saying. It's saying to um, attach your thoughts to the things that are good and pure and lovely. But I love this chance. It says, fix your thoughts. Fix your thoughts. You might have some broken thoughts. You might have some, my dad says, stinking thinking. You might have some things in your mind that are not correct perspective. You're not looking at this the right way. So fix them. Fix the thoughts. It might take some crazy glue and crowbars, but fix it. Get those thoughts back on track. I'm actually reading some material right now. Uh, it's, it says, thinking like a leader. What would it look like? And I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm about to step into somebody's house right now. I know I'm on your smartphone in your bedroom, but I'm about to step in your, in your business. What if you stopped thinking like a victim and started thinking like a leader? wonder if you stop thinking that everything's against you and you start taking control of your life and your decisions. wonder if you changed your perspective and changed your thinking. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know, I'm in someone's business. I'm in the flow right now. I don't care how you were raised. I don't care what side of the tracks you came from. It's not an excuse to remain where you are right now. You can think like a leader. You can lead change right where you are in any situation. All right, free information right there. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 29, it says this. Then Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. 
Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle and you will find rest for your soul. Let's talk about coping mechanisms for pressure for a moment here. We all have different personality types. We all have different ways that we deal with stress and pressure. It looks differently in all of our lives. The problem comes, though, when you choose to handle these stresses and these pressures by doing harmful behaviors. Jesus says here in Matthew 11, if you are feeling the need to use harmful behaviors in order to deal with your situation, come to me first. That, that's what he's saying there. If you are burdened or heavy laden, if you're feeling the need, come on somebody, if you're feeling the need to use a substance that you've already had the victory from in order to handle this situation, God is saying, come to me first. I'm talking to somebody here today. You've, you've, you've been playing around with something that you already had the victory of. And, and, and the reason is, is because you've grown weary in trying to fight the temptation. You're tired of the fight of not doing the bad behavior instead of going to God. Ooh. He, listen, he's not even saying that, that you need him to give you the strength to overcome it. He's saying, come to me and you'll find rest. I think some of us need to give up. We need to give up fighting and go to God and find rest. For your weary soul, he says. You will find rest in him. Number three, we find pressure from wrong priorities. We can find pressure from wrong priorities. Luke 10, 42, it says this, Mary, Jesus is speaking, he says, Mary's chosen what's best. She's chosen the best thing, and I will not take that away from her. So let me ask you this real quick. What's your priority list look like? Do you have a list of priorities in your life? What's, what's the number one priority in your life right now? And listen, just stop. Stop for a minute. Stop. Hold up. <laughs> Before you comment, God, I'm not asking you to tell me what should be the number one priority in your life. I'm not asking you to lie and then sin. I'm saying what is? What is your number one priority in life? And if you do say God, how do you quantify that? How do you quantify that God is your number one priority? Okay? So let's just throw this out. I'm just throwing this out. Don't hate on me. For some people in here today, your number one priority is actually social media. Now, I I already feel it. Some are, not me. Not me. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I get it. I get it. But just tell me, the alarm clock goes off. And most of us use our cell phone as our alarm clock today. You're going to hit the stop button or the off button. Then what do you do? There's no shame here. I'm not judging anybody. But before you come out your face and say that God's the number one priority, then that first swipe needs to be to your, to your Bible app. That first swipe needs to be to your daily devotional. But most of us, a lot of us, we swipe to see what news did we miss while we were sleeping. <clears throat> what happened? In the last few hours, what did I miss? And I'm not trying to shame anybody. This isn't a guilt trip. This isn't about you doing more works. I'm asking honesty and honestly, what is your number one priority? Some of us, it's more sleep. Okay. 
And I know it. I'm feeling it. I'm already feeling tension for the five people that are in this room right now. That there's like, yeah, but, but Pastor Mike, you know, I really love God. Okay, but the priorities. What do you spend the majority of your time doing? I would say for some of us, God is beneath the priority of food. Mm, Got to get that cup of coffee in. Got to get that caffeine before I, before I get in those devotions. Yeah, but that doesn't, I'm, listen, there's no shame. Just be honest. I've read lots of leadership books and there's this one famous leadership author that I love reading after and I got to his priority list. He put them in this book that I was reading and I'm gonna be honest with you, it bothered me. His priority list bothered me that he put God at like number five on his priority list. And I was venting, man. I was heated. I was like, I'm gonna call this guy and I'm gonna say something to him about this, which I did not. And then it dawned on me, he's probably right. I mean, and he is right. That is his priority list. That's where God land on his priority. And his success, his personal success was above that, above God. His relationship with his wife and kids was above that. They, they were there, and God was right there, around, around number five. And it bothered me. I thought to myself, how much more productive could this guy have been if God was a little higher on his list? I start to think to myself about me. Is God, is my personal relationship with Jesus Christ the number one thing in my life. Well, you know what will expose that? Pressure. Pressure will expose that. When I feel, when you feel the pressures of life coming, what do you first turn to? Whatever you first turn to is the priority in your life. Pressure exists when you seek peace from the wrong place. Pressure exists when you seek peace from the wrong place. What should be the first thing? What should be the first thing in our lives? Matthew 6, tells us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So let me give you a simple challenge today. Simple challenge. Before you open Facebook, before you open Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, or your favorite news feed, open the Word. Open the Word. Make that a habit in your life. Make it a habit in your daily life that before you consume anything that could throw you off, that could feed your mind or feed you something negative, feed on the Word. If you put that in its priority place in your life, I promise you, you will have a change in your life. Having that conversation with God, giving him his rightful place in your life, I'm promising you, will promote you and push you into a much better place. Philippians 4, 6 says this, don't worry about anything. That's easier said than done, Paul. He says, but pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he's done. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a mathematical equation you can't break up, okay? Ask him and thank him for what he's already done. Look back at the faithfulness of God. Then you will experience the peace of God which exceeds anything you can understand. His peace will guard your heart and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Jesus. In our story in the book of Matthew with Martha, she made the dinner more important than time with Jesus. She made her works, her ability to perform a task to impress Jesus more important than simply being with Jesus. I'm not telling you to do devotions and read your Bibles to impress God. I'm saying that that's how we spend time with God. 
That's how I draw close to him. And she really believed, Martha really believed that it was correct. No, this is what I do. This is how I serve God. I cook dinner. But she put serving God above being with God. I need to make this dinner. Then I can sit down and enjoy time with Jesus. I need to do the works for God so he can see how much I love him. Then I can relax. And we do this all the time. Even when it comes to serving in the local church. And, and, and we can find this tendency a lot of times, even on staff at a church, that we put how much time and effort I'm doing to my job and to serving the church. And we forgot to spend time with God. You know what God's saying to you today? Relax. Enjoy my presence. Enjoy my presence. It is in my presence that there is fullness of joy. So we got to get the priority straight. We've got to see with the right perspective. And we need to resolve some personal issues. When we get these things working correctly, the pressures aren't there, then the peace of God will reign richly in your heart and in your mind. Maybe you're watching online today. And you've never experienced godly peace. Well, godly peace only comes by having the presence of God. That, that's the only way it can happen. And if you don't have the presence of God, that's because you've never invited him into your life. Today, here at Family Church, we want to make that very simple for you. If you need the presence of God in your life, if you need the Holy Spirit to come in your life and bring that peace that surpasses all understanding, then we want to pray with you. And if you're sitting at home watching this right now, you can pray this with us out loud. Say this with me. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you comment Jesus in all capital letters in any one of our social media lines? And, and hopefully um, you read your Bible before you went on our social media feed. I'm just saying, no, I'm just messing with you today. If you accepted Jesus, comment Jesus, and we would love to connect with you, direct message you, and get you started in your first week with your walk in the Lord. We love you. Thank you for tuning in today. We pray that everything you set your hands to would prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name.